So we talked about this slide last class. Um, <clears throat> just wanted to you know, make another pass at going over the cell cycle. Remember, 90% of the cell cycle is interphase. Interphase is broken up into three phases, G1, S, and G2. Um, and, and the G stands for gap. So it's the gap in the inner, the intermission between cell division. Like the main idea of the cell cycle is like, what is like the, the life cycle of a cell culminating in like it choosing to divide and make two new identical daughter cells. NG1, in all the phases, you're doing metabolic activity and growth. That's just like kind of some basic cell stuff. I didn't emphasize this as much last class, but like if you're going to divide the cell, like yeah, you have to make a copy of the DNA, but you also make, have to make a copy of the organelles. Right? Like you got to make another... Um, you know, if like if there's 20 mitochondria in a daughter cell, you got to make 40 because you're going to have to divvy up those organelles and the new cell parts. So keep that in mind. Like we're also making during um, G1 and, and to some degree in G2, they're making other copies of like the different organelles. Uh, bless you as well. There's different cell parts. Um, whenever you're uh, in G1, these are unduplicated chromosomes, right? So this would keep in track of the chromosome number. This would be the, when the cell is at, we call it 2N, N being one copy of all the chromosomes. So think of 23 and me, we got 23 chromosomes. Our normal body cells are 2N. Oh, we call that diploid. I didn't drop that word last class. We'll talk about diploid. It's haploid would be um, when you're just N. So um, uh, those would be the gametes, the, like the sex cell, the sperm and the eggs. They are just N haploid where they have just 23 chromosomes. So if a sperm and egg come together when you first um, uh, make that, uh, uh, that embryo, that would then be, become then diploid 2N, die to where you have 46 chromosomes. Now, S phase, if you're going to divide up the, the cell, you got to make a copy of all the DNA. Otherwise, you would drop back down to haploid. So then after S phase, you become 4N, which is, um, you know, if you do 96 times 2, that, or 46 times 2, you would get to 92, okay? Um, and then a big part of a G2 is preparation for cell division. Think of like Gatorade G2, you're preparing for athletic things for maybe, or like video games or something, I don't know. Um, here we're gonna check the DNA. So we're also checking that DNA, making sure that we didn't make any errors when we replicated the DNA. And if there are some errors, then we can kick that cell out here and label it for destruction. This also represents something called G naught. And these are cells that are undividing cells. So um, some of those undividing cells could be like, um, thank you. Could be like uh, your muscle or your nerve cells. Those are the most common. Um, um, your neurons, like those are your most common like undividing cells. Okay. All right, and then only 10% of the whole cell cycle is actually like the cell division process. So um, the first part of cell division is mitosis, and it's the main part. This is called <coughs> nuclear division, where we're actually dividing up the nucleus. And then when we divide up the cytoplasm, that's cytokinesis. And confusingly, mitosis plus cytokinesis, that is called the mitotic phase. I say it's kind of confusing because you might think the mitotic phase is just mitosis, but it's actually both cytokinesis and that. And the mitotic phase is basically just a synonym for cell division. So just a little vocabulary to make sure you kind of keep those words straight. Um, oh, and then, all right, so yeah, once we do mitosis, then we drop back down to that two in that diploid level because you divide up uh, half of the DNA. Okay, um, so, yeah, 9.2B, we'll call it, is really getting into like the mitotic spindle. So uh, remember PP mat, um, you got prophase, prometaphase, thank you, prophase, prometaphase, um, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So this is showing metaphase. You know it's metaphase because the chromosomes are, are meeting, meta meeting, they're meta in the middle, middle of the cell. And what the purpose of this slide is to try to um, focus in on what are called the kinetic cores. So that's what they're focusing on, focusing on here. 
the kinetochores, it's this protein complex. So it's a protein complex um, where the, it's where the microtubules connect into um, on, these, uh, on these sister chromatids. So like um, this is, the kinetochore is at the centromere. At centromere. So remember, each of the sister chromatids has a centromere. So like here's a centromere and then the kinetochore attaches, it builds itself on the centromere. And then the, um, what we call the kinetochore microtubules hook up to the uh, kinetochores. So the kinetochore microtubules, their job is to separate the sister chromatids. And then the overlapping non-kinetochore uh, microtubules, their main job is to elongate the cell, right? So their, their job is to then push that way to keep elongating the cell so that ultimately we can do cytokinesis and split the cell into two. Um, the centrosomes, that's the organizing center for the microtubules. So the microtubules um, ultimately come out of the centrosome. The cent there are two centrosomes at opposite poles. These are called the centrioles. And what's interesting about the centrioles is they actually don't play a role in this process. They seem like they would, but like they've done experiments where they've like, I think using like a laser, they've like destroyed the centrioles and like animal cells. And uh, mitosis still happens. Like we can still, um, the microtubules still work properly. So um, there you go. I don't really know what exactly, nor I think scientists completely understand what specifically they do, but that's just kind of an interesting to keep in mind. The aster is referring to that, like aster is referring to like a star. It looks like kind of like a, a starry array of, um, these are some short microtubules that, um, they're not quite as relevant, but I, I believe that they also play a role in trying to extend that cell outwards. So it's kind of like with the uh, non-kinetic core microtubules. Okay. So um, this is just in words, everything I, I should have said here. Yep. So no, nothing new here that I didn't say on that last slide. Kinetic cores, they assemble at the centromere. Um, yeah, so just, just in words, we already went over. And, so anaphase, remember uh, A for away, or like anaphase, we separate the sister chromatids, so like, that would be a sister chromatid, that would be a sister chromatid, and they're being separated. Um, I'll explain these two bullet points on this slide. So I'll, I'll come back to those. A, a question that like, that arises is like, whenever we're separating those sister chromatids, so this is showing anaphase, right? Which end do the kinetochore microtubules shorten? Because what's happening when we're pulling apart the... Uh, the, um, uh, the sister chromatids, there's a few different things going on. One of them is there's a motor protein that's inside the kinetochore. The motor proteins, we talked about those when we were the cytoskeleton. Those are the proteins that would like walk along the cytoskeleton carrying cargo. Uh, they're also, uh, um, and so these motor proteins, this motor protein would like <clears throat> be in the kinetochore and it would latch onto the sister chromatid and it would like walk along pulling apart the sister chromatid. And it's gonna walk that chromosome to the other end of the cell to create your two new nuclei, okay? There's also some motor proteins at each end of the, uh, uh, the centrosome. You'd have, some micro, you'd have some motor proteins that like reel in, almost like, a, like you know, if you're fishing or something, they'll help to reel in these chromosomes. But what this experiment is looking at is another way that like we kind of bring those chromosomes in is we shorten the microtubules. In other words, the microtubule is that, um, that tube-shaped cytoskeleton part that's made of the tubulin protein. Uh, the tubulin protein was like these like little circular proteins where like collectively that would make up the microtubule. So when we shorten these microtubules, 
they like literally we say they depolymerize. So if you polymerize polymer, it's many, you're actually building the microtubule. So if you depolymerize, that means you're slowly breaking apart these individual tubulin subunits. So the question is, when we break apart these uh, tubulin subunits, do we break them apart at this end or at this end? Do we break them apart at the, um, the chromosome end or do we break them apart at the spindle end? And that's what this experiment was looking at. So here's what they did. They um, radioactively labeled, they marked this middle portion of the mitotic spindle. Basically, this whole, these, whole micro, these whole spindle fibers are radioactive labeled. They're fluorescing like light. You can see them. They took a laser and basically they removed the fluorescence. So this like stands out because it doesn't shine. It'd be like a dark spot and these are light spots. And here's what they saw. If you then go to this image, they saw that this end of the microtubule, the chromosome, the centromere end, got smaller. So that's what you see there. See how the yellow spot is smaller here at the centromere end? And this end that goes to the mitotic end didn't get smaller. So what that tells you is we're losing the microtubules at this end. If like I add, this would be like the centromere end, right? We lose the microtubules at this end and not at like the, uh, this would be the, the, the centrosome end. The centrosome end, you're not losing those microtubule subunits. I hope that makes sense. Um, now that's not true for all species. Um, like different organisms, uh, they will lose their uh, microtubule subunits at the, uh, the spindle, that, that centrosome end. Um, so it's not like, but for like our chromosomes, that's how our chromosomes will like pull apart the sister chromatids. So there you go. And that's what they're trying to say here. So the microtubules shorten by depolymerizing at the kinetic core ends. So that's the kinetic core. The kinetic core builds on the centromere of the chromosomes. Um, and then the, the chromosomes are reeled in by motor proteins at those spindle pools that like kind of help pull them in. Um, when I, the microtubules, like, so they depolymerize, they break apart after they pass by the motor proteins. Meaning if I go back to this picture, when these motor proteins move, or this, this motor protein is moving and pulling this chromosome down the microtubule. Once this motor protein passes by it, then the tubule and subunits start breaking apart. They give it like, um, like in some action movie, like the, the heroes running across a bridge and like after each step, the bridge like crumbles past them and crumbles past them and crumbles past them until they get to the end of the bridge. And like they get to like the other side of the cavern and like there's no bridge. <clears throat> That's what this is showing. As that chromosome moves down like towards the other end of the cell, as it's moving um, towards the, uh, the, other, the, the other pole, as it passes by the end of the spindle, this end shortens. And that's what you see here. That's why this is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. There's some animations that um, it should have you watching in the Mastering Bio today that might make it a little more sense than me kind of waving my arms and trying to explain it that way. All right, um, moving on. I think I said everything here. Yeah, so at the very, um, once we're done with anaphase, we begin to disassemble this mitotic spindle because it's done its job. We've already separated the chromosomes. Um, all right, we talked about this last class, the difference in cytokinesis between plants and animal cells. So just kind of showing you a picture of it. The cleavage furrow. So um, the cleavage furrow is basically, um, think of a drawstring. The cleavage furrow is basically like a drawstring bag. Um, you know, I'm talking about those like rope string bags where you like can pull like that's kind of how the new like the cytokines happens in the animal cells. Like you pull the drawstring, and that drawstring is made of um, actin. So the drawstring is made. Of, so know that the drawstring is made of actin. That contractile ring is made of actin. The microtubules, the mitotic spindle, that's made of the microtubules. Okay. 
So this actin drawstring is gonna uh, pull apart those two cells and we call it a cleavage furrow. And remember, animals have cleavage. As opposed to plants, plants do a cell plate. And the reason for that is plants have a cell wall. So the cell plate is the formation of a new cell wall. So basically you have these vesicles that will contain the material to build the cell wall. Where do these vesicles come from? If you go back to like, like unit three, we remember? Think to like the kind of the shipment system in the cell. Golgi, yeah. That's that pretty good. Golgi. Yeah, the Golgi is where these vesicles come from, and then they're gonna come in the middle of these, uh, uh, where that you want to split the cell in half and form that new cell plate, that new cell wall. Yeah, all right, I already talked about this. Um, this is kind of showing like actual pictures of, cell doing, of cells doing the different phases of mitosis. I won't belabor it too much, but like prophase, remember in prophase, the chromosomes are um, beginning to condense and you can see the nucleus. Interphase, remember it looked like a bowl of spaghetti. Like you would have the nucleus, but then the chromosomes are all unwound because we're using that DNA to make proteins. So in prophase, you can tell prophase from interphase because you can see the condensed chromosomes. Metaphase, or I'm sorry, prometaphase, uh, I think PP Matt, prometaphase, um, you begin to see those chromosomes migrating towards the middle of the cell, and then that, um, that nuclear envelope, the nucleus, um, begins to like break apart. And then in a metaphase, you see them meeting at the middle of the cell. Um... So yeah, we already talked about this. Anaphase, we pull them apart. Telophase, you actually, you actually have the chromosomes at opposite ends of the cell. And then telophase and cytokinesis, they, they kind of happen simultaneously. Where technically the formation of, this would be a plant cell, right? Here's that cell plate forming where you're doing the cytokinesis. Uh, all right, so do, talking about like how does cell division happen in uh, bacterias? Um, I think I mistakenly said uh, last class that um, like binary fission is basically just like mitosis. That is not true. Like when bacteria do binary fission, they, they are making like duplicate copies of the chromosomes, but it's really just like they don't they don't go through like the PP mat. They just like make a copy of all their chromosomes and then it just like splits in half. It just the cell gets the bacteria gets bigger and then just, just splits in half. Um, so by to fission referring to like the breaking apart of something. Um, so let me show you like what's going on here. So with the bacteria, bacteria are very simple, right? They got their cell wall, got their plasma membrane. Something to make note of for binary fission is the origin of replication. So this is, it, it's harder to see here, but the bacterial chromosome is a circular chromosome. Bacteria have a circular chromosome. And um, if we're going to replicate that chromosome, you have to have an origin of replication. Meaning there has to be like a point where you open up that circle to make that an origin where you start doing that replication. And um, so that's what they're showing here. So we're going to pull apart that chromosome. And now you end up having two copies of the origin. So this copy would be, become like one chromosome that stays in the cell, like here. This origin is then going to migrate over to this part of the, the cell. So that, and that makes sense, right? Because you want two copies of the chromosome because when the cell elongates, you want one copy of the chromosome to be like on that half of the cell, another copy of the chromosome to be on this half of the cell so that when the bacteria gets big enough, it can then just split right in half, almost like a soap bubble just breaking open. Not breaking open, but like just like splitting. Um, not, not really as important. I, I won't ask you, Adora, would I doubt the AP exam? Uh, thank you. They're my, tubulin like proteins, so kind of microtubule like proteins would be helping in breaking that apart. Not as important. Um, actin kind of proteins are, are helping to like move this chromosome, like, like helping us do like the replication process. Um, there's not really like 
much I would, I would imagine the AP exam would ask you about binary fission, they'd probably want to ask you about the circular chromosome versus like how we have like our 23 different chromosomes. Um, so there you go. And then in a similar way, the evolution of mitosis isn't going to be like a heavily tested area. So I'll go over it real quick. Um, uh, basically, the idea would be like, all right, well, we know prokaryotes, which are our earliest cells, they do binary fission. You can sharpen it. Um, and so the question is, well, how does mitosis, how did mitosis evolve? And the short answer is nobody ultimately knows. But the idea would be like, um, there would be kind of, like, we do know that like you have binary fission here, mitosis here. There is kind of an intermediate between the two. Um, and that's what like protists will do. So remember, protists are, um, are you, they're single celled eukaryotes. So unicellular eukaryotes. So why that's relevant is we are made of eukaryotic cells, right? So these next two slides are looking at how do these different types of eukary single cell eukaryotic cells, the protists, how do they do mitosis? Because they do have a nucleus. So the first would be like how dino, dino flagellates do it. And I, I'm not going to like test you on the difference between these two. It's more of just like a, an interesting to look, thing to look at. What they do is they basically, they keep the nucleus intact. Like they don't break apart the nucleus like we do. And then this is also, it's interesting. The chromosomes will like attach themselves to the nuclear envelope. It reminds me of like that, you ever do that carnival ride where it's like, you like lay against the wall and that the thing spins really, it's almost like that going on. Like where they're like attached to the wall and then the microtubules will, will like insert themselves to little pores in the nuclear envelope. And then the microtubules then like pull apart the cell and the chromosomes get pulled apart and travel to their, to their proper locations by like just sticking to the nucleus. So it's kind of interesting. I don't know. Compare that to what the diatoms and some yeast do where the chromosomes don't attach to the nuclear envelope, but you still get an intact nuclear envelope. And um, the microtubules assemble inside the, uh, the nucleus. Um, so you have like an assembly of like a mitotic spindle, almost similar to like what we have. And then you have the kinetic core forming here. So like getting back to kind of the evolution idea, this would be like a, probably a better intermediate with like how we do it, where you do see like a kinetic core complex. But um, anyways, and then the nucleus will split in half. So yeah, the, the evolution of mitosis is an active area of research if you're interested in that. Um, okay, that's all I got to say.